Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, this morning we think of all those requests that are in the bulletin and those that have come in online, those prayer requests that are here in this room that are unspoken. Lord, you know each one. And Lord, for that, for those prayer requests that have come in today, even this morning, for the communities that have been affected by the flooding in our region, Lord, that you would be with each one of those families, each one of those communities, that, Lord, that somehow that they would find you, that they would see you. Lord, we pray for the, the churches and those communities that you would strengthen them, that, Lord, that they would be beacons of light in their communities. Lord, we ask for all these needs that you know each one. We pray for each family you will provide in a way that only you can in Jesus name and Lord we ask for your blessing on the remainder of our time together that Lord that the words that I'm going to share this morning would not simply be my words but Lord that they would be molded by the power of your Holy Spirit into each and individual ear that's here today in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name and everyone said this morning, amen. 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 Isn't it good to be here this morning? That wasn't very convincing. Isn't it good to be here this morning? Amen. amen. Didn't you know that normally after Easter weekend, we have snow squall watches and snow squall warnings? You know, I went to bed last evening and the wind was howling outside the house and I can hear all the wind and I was... I, I had this thought, I had, wouldn't it be funny if after, this is seven, seven years approximately that I've been here as a pastor, we've never had to uh, cancel a service on a Sunday morning uh, because of weather, and I had this thought, wouldn't it be funny if the week after Easter 2016 that we get a snow squall, we've hardly had any snow this year, and we get snowed in. And so this morning, when I got up, one of the first things I did is I, I peeked out my window, and I noticed that there was just a skiff of snow. And I thought to myself, what on earth were they talking about? <laughs> what was all that fuss about? The wind was howling. You know, judging by what I was hearing, I thought, wow, there's going to be a lot of snow out there. I'm going to have to get the snowblower out dig my way out you know sometimes our minds can make things appear worse than they really are can you relate to that in some other circumstances that are going on in your life some of the the exterior evidence would point to something really serious but then when you really look at it it's maybe not so bad i wonder how the enemy uses that sometimes in our lives to corner us to get us into a corner Amen? Amen? Amen. This morning I want to talk to you uh, about having real faith in Jesus Christ. One of the things I enjoy doing most is, is sharing the gospel. And with all of the, the, the funerals and uh, people coming into our building in the last month, we've had a tremendous opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to every single person that has come into this building, and that really makes me excited. And every single facet of the ministry is all centered around that right down to preparing the food downstairs when people come in and they see the church building it's all about the delivery of the message of the gospel sure we want to be there for the families and we understand that we're rallying around them and providing support and care but we're doing that out of a desire to share the gospel of jesus christ i want to encourage you this morning with something before i forget to mention it but we have had several families within our church enter into a season of grief and something that I want to remind you and encourage you to do is going forward from now the
funerals have passed and it's easy to go back into normal routine, but I want to encourage you this morning that when you begin to think, when you're just going through the day and one of those families or one of those family members come into your mind, say a little prayer for them. Or maybe if you get a, call, get a thought and you want to send a card, oftentimes where most of the need is, is in the weeks and months after. So I want to encourage you to continue to provide the, the prayer support, the encouragement for all of the families that have recently gone into a season of grief. And that goes for everything that happens. If people cross your mind, I don't believe it's a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. And if you think of someone, if someone crosses your mind, it could just be the Holy Spirit giving you a nudge to pick up that phone or type them an email, go and pick up a card and send them a card, or just say hi. Somehow we've lost the art today of just saying hi. We live in the most connected world possible, but yet so many are disconnected. Just say hi. Even at McDonald's, you can go and you can order a smile. Did you know that? <laughs> now you'll all be lining up at McDonald's after the message today and seeing the smile. No, you'll be downstairs. But you'll go there after. You'll, not you'll notice that. It's on, the, it's on the sale. It's free. It's the only thing at McDonald's. It's free. And you can actually ask for a smile. I want to talk this morning, as I mentioned, about having real faith in Jesus. We're going to be talking and reflecting on the letter of Paul to Philemon. This is a very short Bible uh, book in the Bible. If you ever want to have a, a bit of bragging rights, say, I read a whole book today. <laughs> Find the book of Philemon and read the book. It's, it's more of a letter. And I'm going to ask you to turn there this morning. Philemon chapter 1, it's the only chapter. I'd throw you for a loop if I said chapter 2, wouldn't I? Some of you would be flipping the page looking for chapter 2. Philemon chapter 1, and we're going to zero in this morning on verses 4 through 7. It says, I thank my God always making mention of you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all the saints. And I pray that the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. For I have come to have much joy and comfort in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. And I love the way that this letter ends in verse 25. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. What a nice way to end, isn't it? What a nice way to draw a conclusion to a letter. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the word that we've read. And we ask over the next few moments as we explore and examine it, that, Lord, that we and our spirits be awakened to what you want to show us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you know what I've learned? And maybe some of you can relate to this. I'm fortunate enough to have learned it at a relatively young age. I'm still young. It pays to be kind. Do you know that? It pays to be kind. You reap what you sow. What you sow is what you reap. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 17, it says, A kind man benefits himself, but a cruel man brings trouble on himself. Faith in the Lord makes all the difference in our lives. Wouldn't you agree with that this morning? I know it's made all the difference in my life and continues to make all the difference. I mean, 
Just think of how miserable life would be without faith in our Lord Jesus Christ who has made that incredible promise to each one of us of eternal life for all whom believe in Him. You see, it's my belief this morning that faith in the Lord is what should govern and or control our lives. It should make us the people that we actually are. It should make us better people than perhaps those who are around us. There should be a difference between the people of God and the people of the world. There should be a noticeable difference in someone's life after that incredible transaction takes place where that person has invited Jesus to be Lord and Savior of their lives. In other words, this morning, our marriages should be different. Our families should be different. Our work, our friends, our recreation, our habits. The question is this morning, and maybe it's a challenging question for some, is how has your faith affected you? How has Christ affected you and changed you? And what does your faith do for you every day? Came across a prayer recently. It goes like this. Possibly you've heard this prayer before. It says, and I quote, Dear Lord, so far today, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm very thankful for that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed. <laughs> and from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot more help. And God does. God does give us help in life. How many know that this morning? You say, Pastor, I've already been helped this morning. That's how faith affects us. Something to take home. If our faith doesn't have a positive effect on our lives, then something is wrong. And generally, what is wrong is not our faith. The problem is that we are not letting our faith rule our lives. Rather, self is ruling our lives. But Christ is supposed to change us. The Bible says, when Christ saw the multitudes, he had compassion on them. And that's the change. That's the change that Christ should bring about us in well, as well. That is, it is my conviction this morning that Christ should change us into something that exhibits compassion. We should be a people of compassion. Christ should change us into compassionate people. That's what I was reflecting on once again this morning is I reflect the incredible grace that has been given and continues to be given to me. And as I examine that and look at it and ponder it, I realize more and more how unworthy I am. And that affects my view of others as well. In other words, from self-serving to people-serving servants. Let's dig into our scripture. Philemon 1, verses 4 to 7. As we read a few moments ago, we see here that Paul is speaking to Philemon about having a real faith in Jesus. What is it? What does it do? 
three areas this morning that the Lord has deposited into my heart. First, real faith in Jesus demonstrates love. Second, real faith in Jesus shares the faith. Third, real faith in Jesus refreshes the people. Let's dive in this morning. Real faith in Jesus demonstrates love. Philemon chapter 1, 4 to 5. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Your love for all the saints. Your love for all the people. I believe that having real faith in the Lord demonstrates love, meaning all the Christians. In other words, how do you treat this morning? How do you treat your brothers and sisters in Christ? Some people are just easier to love than others, aren't they, this morning? But love, we must. We must demonstrate love to our brothers and sisters as best as we can. We need to demonstrate to all the saints in the church and outside our church. You see, I do, I do believe that there are saints and or saved people in many other churches that preach Jesus as the Son of God and Savior of the world how do we treat those people? We should treat them with love and respect. Someone once said to me, and I've never forgotten it, all people, they have basic needs. They just want to be heard and respected. And I've never forgotten that advice as I think and as I hear, as I interact with people. Friends, we must demonstrate love to all who claim Christ as their Savior. Some people will be easier to love than others. But we must love them no matter what. That's, what's, that's what true faith in the Lord does. And I want to encourage you this morning as, as your pastor, I I have the tremendous privilege of, of being your leader for this time. For such a time as this, the Lord has, has placed me here, has placed us together in this, in this wonderful community that, that we call Southport, in this wonderful church family. And we don't have any, any issues in this church. We're really blessed here. Everybody gets along for the most part. I mean, if we can get along with Louise and, and Jared and and they can sit here and collect all my spit on Sunday mornings. I mean, it's great, isn't it? I mean, Louise, she sent me a text message yesterday, and she said, Pastor, when can I start work? <laughs> Louise has been off for about six weeks because of her surgery, five weeks. And uh, I said to her, I said, well, you can start really anytime you'd like to. And a few moments later, I, I texted her back, and I said, you must be bored. <laughs> and uh, she said, yeah, she is. But you know, there, there's an underlying part of that as well. Is she loves to serve. She loves to serve. And I've watched as this incredible family, and I mean you and those that aren't here, that should be here this morning but can't be here, and I, I want them to be included in this as well, that over the last several weeks, I've watched as an incredible orchestra of people has rallied together and come around families and circumstances and needs. And I said to someone a few weeks ago, I said, I just feel like I'm, I'm directing this magnificent symphony and watching as the orchestra's playing. It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. And you all need to be really proud of yourselves in a healthy way. 
and realize what God has done. I know we're tired. I get that. Many of us are tired, myself included. It has been an incredible three weeks. And the food service people downstairs, they're tired. They've been nonstop. So let's keep our focus on what God did and has accomplished. And I believe is continuing to accomplish as each one of those people is in their own way proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as people have come into our building. Having real faith shares the faith. It's amazing how that correlates and goes right into the next point here this morning, continuing in verse 6. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Active in sharing your faith. That's what having real faith in the Lord does. We become an active, we become active in sharing Christ with others. Do you, have you, have so? I believe that when we are sold on Christ, we will somehow try to communicate, sell him to someone else. Are you following me this morning? I'm reminded of uh, when I was in sales, and uh, I'm, I'm relatively good at sales. I can sell ice to an Eskimo. It's, it's something that, that I'm good at, and I like to sell things. And during my time selling things, I've sold many things, and those of you that know my journey, and uh, maybe those of you that don't would be interested to know that I've sold lawn tractors. I know that's shocking. I've sold computers. That's maybe not so shocking. And clothing. And even spent some time selling uh, cosmetics and uh, perfume as well. Um, I, I, was, I like to sell things. I worked at Sears, and Sears opened up a whole lot of opportunities for me to sell all kinds of things. But I'm not really necessarily the most handy of guys. I can do things, but watching me with power tools is not really something that... You'd, you'd be watching on YouTube for how-to videos, okay? Uh, but I remember one day I was, I was selling lawn tractors, and I really got, got the swing of this. And there was a special going on at Sears a few years ago, and uh, it was Tractorama is what it was called, and it was outside in the parking lot, no one sound, and it was a big deal. They had the radio station there and had all the banners out. They were selling hot dogs, and we had all the tractors outside, and... My job was to sell lawn tractors. I didn't know the first thing about a lawn tractor. <laughs> except it cut grass <laughs> if you put the blade down. And but my job was to sell lawn tractors, and so I became excited and challenged by this, and I sold a lot of lawn tractors that day. I don't know how many satisfied customers there were. I hope there was lots. But I sold a lot of lawn tractors. My point is this morning, I got excited about selling what I needed to sell. How many this morning are excited about Jesus? And would be excited enough because of the faith that you have in Christ Jesus to go out and talk about Jesus. You're not selling him necessarily, but you're talking about Jesus. That's what we did here for the past two funerals, do you know that? Is we talked about Jesus. That's what we did here last Sunday, is we talked about Jesus, and that's what we're doing here this morning, is we're talking about Jesus. I'm talking about my best friend, Jesus Christ, and what he has done in my life is so awesome, I want nothing more than to see what he can do in your life this morning. Amen. 
I believe that if we are truly passionate about something, some product, we are truly sold on it, we talk about it, and we may well sell somebody else on it as well. You know that. If you really like what you have for lunch today, then you're going to invite your friends to come. Right? If you really like the service that you get at the local store, you're going to tell your friends about it. Do you like what Jesus has done in your life? Are you going to tell your friends about it? Yes. Amen. Amen. I think that any way we approach witnessing is better than no way. Any way that we approach talking about Jesus, sharing about Jesus. We can talk about all the positive things in the church. That's always a good thing to do. And we've got lots of positive things to talk about. I mean, no other church in this region produces pancakes that thick, okay? There's always a good thing to do. And sometimes we will open the door to even more and more witnessing, sharing Christ's opportunities. Any way that we can open the door to share the gospel, for, gospel of Jesus Christ, we should. And if we think about it, we can always think of ways to point people to Christ, no matter what they talk about. Somebody that's really good at that in our congregation is Howard, and I wish Howard was here this morning. But there is a man, and I've referenced him before, that can talk about Christ in almost any circumstance possible. I have seen it with my own eyes. Just the other day, if you ever want to see Howard Matz, he's at the Tim Hortons every morning. And just the other day, before the funeral service uh, for Bart, uh, for Pat, rather, there was uh, a, a Howard sitting there at Tim Hortons. And I was getting my oatmeal and my coffee, and I, I just seen him. And he seen me, and, and he just had that twinkle in his eye that he was about to share Jesus Christ with someone that he was sitting with. And I love to watch that. Don't be afraid to speak for Jesus. Don't be afraid. In fact, the more you speak for him, the more you'll find greater boldness in doing this. True faith in the Lord shares the faith because we know he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And finally, having real faith refreshes the saints, refreshes. How many know that this morning? There's refreshing. There's refreshing. Let's examine. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 11 to 12, it says, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Colossians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, Tychus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. This is about encouragement. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. It says, We sent Timothy, who was our brother and God's fellow worker in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 10 and 12 he died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, that we may live together with him. And I like this last part. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. You've heard people say, well, that's what separates the men from the boys. Maybe you've heard that. 
What is it that separates the men from the boys? It could be hard work. Boys tend to want to play, and true men are always at work. That's really what that saying is all about. Are you following me this morning? But what about when it comes to people of faith? And people, men and women this morning. People. What separates? What separates? Work is one thing. Sharing your faith, having an active faith. But what about also loving each other this morning, standing with one another as I have watched you so perfectly do over the last month? It's been wonderful to watch you standing with one another as we have been going through seasons and valleys over the last several weeks. You see, true faith in Christ this morning demonstrates love. It shares the faith with others. And it works to build up people. Friends, we need to do more and more of that. Building each other up. Building each other up here every time we gather. Downstairs in a few moments, we're going to go and have fellowship. Watch what happens when you, when you take the time, when you take that opportunity to build one another up, to complement and to encourage one another. Watch what happens. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Lord, we thank you for this privilege that we've had to gather in your house this morning. We thank you for each person that's here today. And Lord, we ask that today that we would be reminded of these truths that we've learned. That Lord, that we would take, take heart and take note of these things and apply them to our everyday lives. And Lord, we ask you to bless the food downstairs as we go down and enjoy each other fellowship. And Lord, that each conversation would be glorifying to you. And Lord, this morning, teach us to pray as you've taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Give me a few moments to get to the back. Love to shake your hand today. See you tonight, 630. Join us downstairs for a time of fellowship. God bless you. sweets uh yeah try one of our sundays this is sunday praise on the message sirius xm